All right, welcome to a recap here for April 1st, 2024 on the NASDAQ. And um, today I'm gonna do things a little differently. What I'm gonna do is actually kind of break down the chart first, and then we're gonna actually play the actual trade, the live trade from my execution chart. Uh, so you can actually see the commentary, see the trade unfold real time as it actually happened live on our stream. So we're gonna jump right into it. So one of the first things to note, you know, obviously we had a holiday Friday, the last trading day was Thursday, and if you traded Thursday, uh, what you would have noted is that we were basically in this trading range all throughout the day, right? Uh, so coming into today, I really didn't have much expectation. Um, I know we had news at 10 o'clock, but one thing that kind of set the, the tone for me was seeing the fact that we had already made it to our red lug level. And if you don't know about lug levels, they're uh, these specific levels that, that are crafted every single day at the start of the day, kind of giving traders insight to potentially key support resistance levels. Now, I've been using them for probably about a year now, and um, to be honest with you, my entire uh, strategy, I would have to say the foundational component of my strategy is tied to what what lug level are we at and what is the next lug level we're headed towards, right? That plus obviously a couple of other things. So we're going to break down the trade setup and what happened here today so we can understand the logic of liquidity because at the end of the day, that's what's moving the market. So here's the, here's the first thing, right? We had our opening gap here Sunday. You can see it on my chart and price immediately rushed to our red lug level. And if we look left, like why would price move to our, this specific area, right? Yeah, there's a lug level, but if we look into it, there's always gonna be a, a, a reason in terms of liquidity. So if we look left, what we would note is Tuesday's high, right? We can see this area here. So this is Tuesday, you see Tuesday here at the bottom of my chart. We can see this range that was created here on Tuesday. So at one point in time, this area was an area where a lot of volume transacted. And what we know about ranges is ranges act like magnets, right? So price basically shot back up to Tuesday's high, last Tuesday's high, and this is overnight, of course, right? And then here at London, we see the rejection. So coming into the open today, now I usually get to my computer around 8 a.m. Eastern time. So I had noted the fact that we had moved from the red lug level here from London, and price was either A, gonna continue lower, or B, find support and eventually pull back. So what I had told the room today, I was like, well, well by the time the, the you know we started the stream, we were already right here at the open of the week. We had basically closed uh, this uh, pre-market spike, right? So at this point I had told the team, I was like, listen, look at how they're creating this little higher high, <clears throat> sorry, the swing high. Uh, I have no interest in getting short here at this area. I expect a pullback. Now I will be, I will tell you, initially I was anticipating a pullback, not all the way back to red. I was thinking maybe we'll get a, a pullback potentially to some fresh supply zone. So if you guys know how I draw my supply zones, I'm always looking at reversal bars. So in this instance, this would have been a potential fresh supply zone that I was looking towards. Uh, and then from here we have obviously this area here. And then of course we have our APEC. So these are the three areas of interest that I was kind of looking to for a potential pullback. Now again, with the, the issue is we don't know exactly which is going to be the level that price is going to reject from. In fact, price doesn't have to necessarily reject any of these levels, right? And that's one of the challenges. But one thing I will tell you is that as this move started happening here at the open, so 9.30 we had this big aggressive move up, right? It was 455 tick move up, getting everyone to think long, right? And that's kind of funny how usually Mondays work. Mondays usually, you know, uh, a trap, right? They're going to trap people and get people off sides and wrong sides. But here's what we noted. Most of the volume up to that point had been traded here near the high, and we had not tested that area yet. And so one thing I know about value or a prices or prices are considered equilibrium, right, or, or balanced, we typically see retest. Of these levels, right? And so we had obviously moved away from the level, but we hadn't retested back to the zone here. And at, at one point, there was our uh, point of control right up in this area. So when we when we couple the point of control with our red lug level, it be it begins to kind of create confluence here that can give us some some edge, right? And that's really what we're looking for. We're looking to develop edge with our trade plan. And so here's what ends up happening. Price ends up ripping all the way up and we get no rejection here at the first supply level. They rip right through, no problem. And then you can see price moves all the way to our red lug level and then they go ahead and give us our first rejection. Now here's one thing to know. Whenever we have an aggressive move up to a key level, most of the time you're gonna see A, either it's gonna break out and continue, right? Break out, pull back, continuation. We all know that. 
But if it's going to fail, usually what you're going to see them is try multiple times. You'll usually see them try two to three times. And if the buyers can't sustain the movement, then usually what you'll see is a buyer failure into a reversal. And so what ends up happening here at the red lug level, we're watching the area here. And you'll note here how they tried once, right? So here's the first attempt. They try. They tried a second time. And then they tried a third third time. And what I like about how they did it on the third time, here's a couple things to know, right? One of the key things here is this. Notice how they created the first higher high, then they created this double top, right? And so they, they got everyone short right there thinking, okay, double top, it's the typical retail pattern. But then what does price do? Price traps low. So they actually take out the structure low, getting everyone to think, oh, it's a breakout to the downside. And then what do they do? They trap high one more time. Then they actually liquidate the people who got short on that double that double top right we call this a crown reversal okay so they end up liquidating and then they give us that rejection and boom we get that waterfall move so i will tell you my first attempt here was right around this area and you know honestly like i got in the trade took some parcels and got stopped out break even i was a little early at first to be honest with you because as the price was moving in the area i was looking to see if i can get a better entry using a smaller bar period and but ultimately what ended up happening we caught the first leg down it was a beautiful move down and um, we were actually holding that for about 100, 125 ticks with our final contract. We had sized in and scaled out. Usually I'm taking profits, 50 ticks, 100 ticks, and then different liquidity levels. Price ends up pulling all the way back to my entry, which was right around the zone here. And I got tagged out break even, which was a little frustrating. But here's one thing we know. One of the key patterns that we trade in our room is a lower high failure off a of red lug level. So what do I mean by a lower high failure? Well, here's the key, right? We have our pre-market where they first tested it, right? So you can see high and then a lower high and then they fail. Then they came back again and note, just note the difference between this high and this high. Obviously, it's a lower high. But that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is once we get that break of structure, we're then looking for an attempt for the buyers to try again. And at this point, they couldn't even get to our lug level. And so I'm going to show you how I actually timed the entry because it wasn't based on the Renko chart. I didn't enter based on the 16 bar. Uh, I entered actually based on order flow. So I'm going to pull up my order flow chart that I use along with my book map. And you'll note, you'll see exactly how I timed my entry, how I got took my profits and was able to write it down. The one thing I love about Renko charts is it really removes the noise in terms of market structure. So you can look at price and you can see, okay, here's here's our impulse leg, here's our pullback, here's our trend, very easy. But the one thing you're not going to be able to see, in fact, not on any chart, unless you're using some type of order flow chart, right, whether it's book map or if you're using something like a footprint or something more in depth, you know, you're not going to actually see what's happening, the interaction between buyers and sellers. And that's very important for the style of trading I do because I'm looking to take the least amount of risk for the biggest amount of reward, right? Which means I want to size in to my A plus setups. I want to be able to have precision with my entries. I don't just get in and you put us like, I'm not going to enter right here and then put my stop loss way up here. Like I don't do that, right? I'm, I'm literally using maybe a five or 10 point stop at the most, right? And so I need to be precise with my entry, especially because I'm trading the NASDAQ. And if you know how the NASDAQ moves, it's a wild horse, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to transition into the actual recording of the trade and you'll see me you kind of entering right around here in this area and basically writing it down t targeting our key level down here now the main key level of the day was actually our naked poc right down here 419 uh in fact we ended up calling that level and then even looking to get long off that level but bottom line with this specific trade where we were able to capitalize on 250 ticks on a sell-off uh it was actually this move right here so you're gonna actually see, see i'm gonna cut to that actual um recording and then i'll jump right back this failure here let's see if we can get it I want them to take out these this buyer here if they got this buyer here then we're good if they hold it we're not good 570 
Boom. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Take out that buyer. Let's go. We need that low to go. This is like that midpoint where it can rip up or rip down. <laughs> so. Seventy level. There it goes. Beautiful. I need the next low to go, which would be right here, fifty five four six. Big seller just came in. Let's see if we can push through. I don't know. What happens is whenever you get these big orders coming in and hitting, if they don't, if price doesn't immediately drop from there, it becomes a problem. That means there's somebody on the other side buying it. But I think we're okay. Looks like we're gonna get that move all the way down. Yeah, good. I'm up another hundred ticks on this short. You guys can see right there. Writing it down now. Let's see if we can get it. Back in the 50s. Let's see if they take out that 16 bar low. Let's go. Come on. Oh, yeah. Big, big volume coming in. What is going on? <laughs> up 173 ticks on this trade 200 ticks holy Jesus 215 ticks 210 ticks let's see if we can break that high of yesterday if we get below that it's gonna be back to the lows of the day mm-hmm 220 ticks I think we might be catching that super trend all the buyers are getting liquidated. Next area is 522. 522. Let's see if we can get there. Come on. Let's go. I'm going to go after the hourly candle, the four hour candle uh, wick. So, on a four hour chart. There is a wick at 478. Yeah, I got some lag on my computer right now, man. Oh boy, it's not good. Oh yeah, this thing's already all the way down. 517, 518. Cool. I'm gonna close it right here. All right. Not bad. Not a bad day. So, so you guys saw the recording and you'll notice the charts there on the left side. What that is is an actually, uh, it's, a, it's a volume chart, the 50 volume chart, uh, utilizing NinjaTrader's uh, market depth order flow indicator along with its big trades indicator, right? So it actually shows me the large trades. So when you saw that big seller come in, it showed me, it, what that's basically pointing out to me is a large transaction, so I'm aggressively hitting the bid, right? Very awesome, very powerful. Uh, and then you also note that you'll see certain like little digits popping up. That's another indicator that, that was created by a friend of mine which basically
basically it's just showing me all the, all the limit orders coming and coming and going, showing spoofs, right? But then on the right hand side you see book map, and the reason why I like book map is because it's showing me all the stop runs, all the icebergs, it's showing me the volume at key levels, letting me know if buyers are stepping in, if sellers are stepping in, and these are the things that are very important to begin to recognize as you start making a decision to enter a trade. See, a pattern, that's kind of like the last thing that you would look at, right? So for me, what I'm looking at is a key level. What's that key level? And that's really the most important thing because if you have the level right, then everything else is right. Let me say it one more time. If you have the key level right, then everything else is right. It makes everything else flow better. Now, once you know what the key level is, timing your entry, right? And so how do you time that entry? Well, that's where a pattern can come in, right? But what you really want to look at is within that pattern, you want to go deeper and you want to actually look at the behavior of the buyers and sellers. And when you begin to start seeing kind of like that, that clue that, hey, in this case, we're looking to short, we see that clue, buyers are exhausting, you know, sellers, the previous sellers are getting stopped out. All of a sudden we start seeing, you know, a, a lack of volume here, you know, whatever. And, and, and these are the things that begin to tip us off that the timing might be ready, right? And then at that point, what happens? Boom, you get that burst of momentum. And we're momentum traders, right? And so in order to time these entries where you're getting in at the, at the peak or at the top or at the bottom, you know, it's really being able to look at the interaction of order flow. But then once all that stuff happens, how do you use a pattern to basically jump in? Because if you're not good at reading order flow, you're not going to be able to have that insight, right? So this is where the patterns come in and the Renko comes in and the indicators come in because here's what I know. You know, if you just look at the Renko chart, the, the, the confirmed entry was actually right here. Here's our perfect trifecta. This is the, 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 the easy money trade right here. All right, this is the easy money trade. This is the confirmed entry right here. You get the break of structure, and then you get the pullback. First pullback, the 50 SMA, plus super trend, reversal bar down, boom, take it down to the next level. That's the easy money trade, right? But if you're looking to be able to get in sooner, get in uh, at, at, the, at the beginning of this transition, the beginning of the move, that's when you want to start kind of diving in deeper and looking at the order flow. So if this interests you, if this sounds something like something you want to learn more about, hit that like button, leave a comment, right? You'll see a link there to our Discord room where we start talking and share. We share these concepts. We actually live stream three times a week uh, where we actually break down the trades that we're doing. We, we call them out and we kind of explain the logic behind it. It's not a trade signal service. It's more to help explain what's happening, what we're looking at, and more importantly, how you can begin to start developing that same understanding uh, of price. So if you guys got value here in this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We look forward to seeing you here in the Discord. Take care.